But next, the most important story I have covered in the past 25 years. I saw a man uh, jump out of the top of the uh, World Trade Center, just hurl himself out the window. I said to myself, we are in something now that is totally different than anything that we've ever imagined before. Next. Once again, Barbara Walters. Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. It will forever be remembered as the most traumatic and frightening of days. On September 11th, the country was in a state of panic and shock. All day long, each of us covered the story in our own way. There were many heroes on that day, but the man who became the symbol of courage and dedication was New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. He was everywhere. Then, just days after the attack, an exhausted Giuliani sat down with me in the early hours of the morning for his first television interview. If I asked you, what are your most searing memories? As I say that, what comes into your mind? I don't, I don't even know what comes first. Seeing the man jumping from the top of the World Trade Center, um, hearing an airplane overhead, and first having someone yell out, there's another airplane attacking, and then having someone else say, it's one of ours. At every daily press conference, you have to give the statistics about the numbers. And, uh, the number of missing is 5,097. That we have How now. tough is it to be the messenger? It's uh, impossible. You just do it. The reality is that um, we, we can look through it. Courage is realizing that you're afraid and still acting. Three months later, he invited me to ground zero. They've removed over a million tons of debris. Unbelievable. Does it ever lose its impact? Do you ever get used to it? No. Uh, I, no, I don't, think, I don't think it has. I think every time I come down here, there's always a sense of shock. There's always a point at which you look at it and you're devastated by it. For the reporters covering 9-11, the human agony was something we found again and again. Everyone had a horror story. Windows on the World was the famous restaurant on top of the World Trade Center. I spoke with the owner, David Emil, and families of his missing employees. They, like so many, were struggling to come to terms with the personal loss. Mr. Emil, how many people do you think you have lost? We think we, um, um, we're missing about 50 people. We think we lost 50 people. We're not exactly sure. And, uh, we would like it if the employees who are safe could get in touch with us. Tina, it is your sister who is missing. Yes. Your beautiful sister. Yeah, and she's only 36 years old. And she has a baby, a daughter, 10 years back home in Ghana. What will you tell this child, if you have to, about her mother? <sighs> Honest to God, I don't know. Six months later, in an effort to understand the origins of the hate that caused 9-11, I traveled to Saudi Arabia, the homeland of 15 of the 19 hijackers and the birthplace of their leader, Osama bin Laden. It was a mysterious world. We traveled south and found Mohammed al-Shiri, the father of two of the hijackers, who was unable to accept the awful truth about his sons. The U.S. investigators, the FBI, the Justice Department, say there is no doubt that your two sons were on the plane that crashed into the World Trade Center. Uh, that's what they believe. That's their opinion. But I don't see any hard evidence to prove that my sons were involved in that crash. What is it about the culture these men grew up in that could have spawned such bigotry and hatred? I spoke with three university students who were schooled in the same southern province as four of the hijackers. You'd rather not shake hands. I understand that. I have a copy of a textbook. It says if you look into any crisis, 
Jewish people have a role to play. Have you been taught this? That Jews are behind yes. the yes. crisis? You yes. have been taught this? Yes. Do you in general feel that the Jewish people in history are, are people who are essentially bad people and cause problems? Do you feel that, Mohammed? Yes, I feel. And these Please. are the educated yeah. young yeah. men. This is an opportunity for you to talk to Americans, perhaps American young people like yourself. I want to tell them that we did not hate them, but please don't support enemies uh, against Muslims. If you respect me, for sure I respect you. And if you hate me, I'll hate you. And we're still trying to understand.